candidate in the 2023 general elections, Peter Obi, says his party will continue to adjust to a new role as Nigeria's main opposition party. According to Obi, the Labour Party shall remain firmly in opposition and keep the APC on its toes to protect the interests of Nigerians. OB, according to former governor of a number of state, uh, he was a former governor, and a, a new Nigeria is possible, he says, in spite of the many unfulfilled aspirations of citizens. He's noted that the Nigerian economy needs a turnaround, considering the rising unemployment, inflation, poverty, inequality, and other key socioeconomic variables. Well, for a conversation on which of PDP and the Labour Party are the main opposition party, well, we're being joined now by former spokesperson for the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council, Kenneth Okonkwo. Good to have you on Newsday. Thanks for joining us and a very happy new year to you. Thank you very much. I wish you same and I wish happy new year to Nigerians. We surely hope it will be a better year than the previous one. Um, uh, in our fledgling democracy, it seems that we need to stand tall. And the Labour Party has come out to say that they are the uh, championing uh, uh, opposition party. In what ways are the Labour Party going to be challenging the status quo and keeping their feet on the necks of the uh, APC and the ruling party in order to make sure that there's some kind of balance uh, within this political ecosystem we currently function? Oh, well, basically, taking you back to the times of the campaign, you would remember that <coughs> Peter B was the person that crafted the seven-point agenda that all these other parties are copying from albeit doing a terrible job out of it. You remember he was the one who came out as a candidate and defended his seven-point agenda, which included securing and uniting Nigeria, as you know, production-centered growth for self-sufficiency and export. And as you know, he talked about effective and efficient legal and institutional reform to ensure, one, cutting out wastage in government. Two, reducing cost of governance, preventing corruption, and importantly, building an honest and efficient civil service. He talked about leapfrogging Nigeria out of oil dependency to the fourth industrial revolution, and human capital development, and expanding physical infrastructure and robust foreign policy. If you check all these people now, the presidential candidates, you discover that they are, we are simply copying from him without learning the routes that he wanted to achieve these things. Now, apart from his knowing exactly what he wanted, he had the commensurate competence, capacity, and character to drive it, which is lacking in all these people. And Nigerians bought into that particular agenda of his. That's why he's the only person that scored 25% in all the six geopolitical zones, including the federal capital territory. None of the candidates won more states than he did, even by the allocated results by INEC. So you discover, that's why he is saying, I know Nigerians, I know what Nigerians want. We now are the effective opposition party. And look at the New Year message by the president, seated now in Asurok, he said Nigerians are expecting him to revamp the economy, to revitalize the industrial sector, to restore security, and to boost agricultural products. Now, this is exactly offshoots of the seven-point agenda, telling you that Nigerians had bought into the agenda of Pitobi. That is what they wanted. That is what any government that wants Nigeria to accept it should implement. That is what they are failing to do. So he is actually the shadow president. If you talk about the parliamentary system, that's how they describe effective opposition leaders. He has earned it because he knew what he wanted to do. Nigerians have bought into it. And he and Labour Party 
coming three months before <laughs> the election, they still won better in a more spread form, the votes of Nigerians. So he has earned that accolade of being the effective opposition leader. And I can tell you that he will do it effectively well, pending when Nigerians will realize the dream of a new Nigeria through him. Now, some analysts believe it's a bit too early, you know, to talk about the Labour Party being the main opposition party, considering how long the PDP has been in existence, its nationwide reach, and the fact that it was once a ruling party. So is it really the Labour Party that is the main opposition party now, or is it Peter Obi that is the main opposition figure at the moment? Well... In all honesty, PDP is not in existence in the political realm of Nigeria. Because let's take an example of what is happening in PDP. A presidential aspirant of PDP, who is the first runner up during the primary election of PDP, and who vowed that he will never leave PDP no matter what is now a minister in APC, telling you that PDP has totally been usurped by APC. You know, there are three things that rule politics, the head, the heart, and the stomach. The head provides the logic, the heart, the sentiment. The stomach is for whatever goes, anything goes. So when a party has reduced itself to the party of stomach infrastructure, which some of their governors actually publicly said is their policy, then you know that that party can never and would never be an effective opposition party. P2B has made it clear. He's not desperate about being Nigerian president. He's desperate about bringing a new Nigeria. And that is why he's effective, both as opposition and as a ruling person. When he was in Anambra State, he was very effective turned a dead economy to a living economy till date. If he becomes the president, that's what he would have done. You cannot be an effective opposition leader if you do not have what it takes to be an effective president if you were given a chance. So PDP, being a party of stomach, a party of whatever goes, is no longer existing in the political realm and minds of Nigerians. I keep saying it, Obi is not the alternative option. Obi is the only option. Now, he is of Labour Party in Nigeria. Independence candidacy is not allowed. You have to operate within the sphere of a political party. And his political party now is Labour Party. There is no need denying the fact that the entrance of Obi energized and reinvigorated Labour Party. Labour Party has been existing. It has produced a governor and produce some members of the National Assembly and State Assembly even before now. Remember, it is the party of NLC and TUC. So it's been existing. But entrance of P2B gave it that national outlook and made it a party that Nigerians can trust. So if you would allow me, I would want you to concede to the fact that the only effective opposition today is both OB and Labour Party. Well, that is why we are keeping the ruling party on their feet. Well, I'm glad you touched on that because I wanted to bring that up. Uh, Peter Obi being the proverbial rock star of the political sphere, especially during the electoral uh, season and, and amongst the youth. We saw him skyrocket and, of course, pull up the Labour Party from virtual obscurity. Now the elections are over. The dust has settled. Um, we're looking for an opposition, but Peter Obi still is the only shining uh, uh, jewel in the crown of the Labour Party. He can't do it all on his own, um, as has been uh, shown uh, from the election circuit and how it all played out. So what are other members of the Labour Party going to do in order to help shoulder some of this burden from Peter Obi, who seems to be, who is the major flag bearer of the party. I mean, you're yourself excluded as you're doing your own work in your own corner here to promote the good work of the Labour Party. But who are the other key leaders in the Labour Party who can share some of this spotlight and burden 
um, and continue to keep uh, the uh, APC and I guess the PDP on their toes. Yes, you know, being honest, remember, P2B is the head. And whatever the head consistently continues to do, other people will gradually follow up. Remember, and as, as you have noted rightly, when we started this new Nigeria and the chase for it, everybody came into Labour Party and we were just knowing each other. And old habits, even from the people that carried some baggages from the other parties, there will still be some droplets and remnants. And as they continue to see Ubi lead by example, they will certainly follow. If we can get the president and the presidency correct in this country, every other thing will follow. If we do not get the presidency and the president correct, nothing will work. Because by the constitution, the executive powers of the federation are vested in the president. One person. And you know, the constitution is so elaborate on the powers of the president. We have one armed forces. We have one police force. And he's the commander in chief of the armed forces. Look at the terrible thing the current administration is doing in terms of security. More than 200 persons, for instance, <coughs> died in Plateau State for a disease, for a problem that is foreseeable and has been there existing. Let me tell you, tackling the security situation of Nigeria is very easy because it has criminal dimension, ethnic dimension, religious dimension, and political dimension. Whoever wants to solve the security problem of Nigeria must be blind to ethnicity, to religion, and to politics. It is only when you're blind, like that blind woman of justice, blinded and carrying the sword, that you can effectively cut off the heads of all these people that are trying to destroy Nigeria. It is political because some of these people actually sponsor political parties and sponsor candidates in order that when they start perpetrating their insecurity on Nigeria, that such political people will look the other way. It is ethnic and religious in the sense that when those people come, they wouldn't want to invade the places that share the same ethnicity and religion with them so that they won't be blackmailed. But the foundation of the insecurity is purely criminal. It is the quest for resources. It is the quest for land. People from the desert area, naturally, when they are lacking because of the non-fertility of their soil, they start moving south and they want to good weather by good means or bad means, they want to take over the fertile land or be accommodated. And when they want to get it through peaceful means and people do not want to let out the ancestral land, they will use other means, including force, to take over the land and resources. So the foundation of insecurity, whether you call it settler, indigene, clash, or headers, farmers clash, is economic, it is criminal criminal acquisition of resources and of land. So if you are going to be able to tackle it as a leader, then you must be blind to politics, blind to religion, blind to ethnicity, because these things combine in making sure the insecurity is intractable. These governments don't have it. You can see they cannot even commiserate. They, they have not even commiserated going to Plateau to empathize with them. And I'm talking about the president. Does he, does he even have the strength? Obi has been there. Obi has been in Tundu, Biri. Obi has been everywhere, empathizing, because he's a man of compassion with Nigerians. So this is the man who is providing the opposition, solving Nigerians' economic problem. Very easy. He has told you you must shift emphasis from consumption to production. What is this government doing? They are simply consuming. I'll give you an example. 
Look at the budget. 10 trillion naira for capital expenditure. Yet 17 trillion naira for the current expenditure, including 8.2 trillion naira for servicing debt. Since this government came in, it has borrowed close to $15.8 billion in seven months. Meanwhile, you have removed oil subsidy completely. What are you borrowing for? You said you want to remove oil subsidy so you can have more money to give us these amenities. Yet you have borrowed all this money. Let me tell you what they're doing with it. Five billion naira to give the first lady to eat. Nothing else. Because she doesn't have any constitutional duty or function. Then 20 billion naira to give chief of staff. They said to renovate his house. 15 billion naira to renovate the VP's house. This will cost Nigeria about 110 million naira every day for the next one year. Meanwhile, you cannot give the workers who are productive up to $1 a day as wage award. He said he was going to give the workers 35,000 naira a month as wage award, not even wage increase, meaning less than $1 a day. Mr. Kenneth $1 Koko. is now 1,200 a day. So this is a government that doesn't have empathy, that does not invest in productive means, they are still consuming the money, oil price is not going to come down soon. You're Mr. Okonkwo, please allow me, you. You know, allow me to interrupt you. You know, allow me to interrupt you for the sake of time. You've please. said, you know, you've said quite please a proceed. lot of things, you know. But a look at the three prominent political parties in Nigeria, now, and I'm talking about the APC, the PDP, the Labour Party. You know, it shows a recycling of the same old crop of politicians with a sprinkle of a few hands, you know, and it's quite clear that Nigerian politicians have no issues, you know, with cross-capitalism at the drop of a hat. Now, this gives the impression that the parties and even the members, you know, do, they lack ideology, you know, they're not really interested in genuine nation building. It seems to be all about power, money, personal ambition. I don't know if this is an issue, you know, that the Labour Party is willing to tackle or it's not up for discussion. How do we change this narrative, you know, when politicians just cross cap it at will, you know, just to realize their ambition? I completely agree with you on that. And that is why I keep saying P2B, P2B. And because that is the only person that. But Peter will be left up, Gar, as well. He left up, he left up, Gar, moved to the PDP, and from the PDP, he moved to the Labour Party. That's so, really, what is the outstanding difference between him and other politicians who have done the same? Good. Because moving from one party to the other is not what makes you to lack competence, character, or capacity. When you have in a country that is rated to be one of the most corrupt, you will discover that if you are in search of a new Nigeria, you will continue to move until you get that platform and that environment and the people around you that you can use to achieve that. I don't need to tell you that Obi might just be a lone wolf crying in the wilderness, repent, repent, for a new Nigeria is possible. That is why you see him making those moves. It is not because he wants power or money. He has told you he is not desperate about being Nigerian president. And he has shown it even when INEC did all the abracadabra. You know what Obi say? Calm down. We wouldn't need to destroy the nation. We will get it at the right time. So he is moving because he's searching for the particular environment and platform we are the people that he's going to lead will accept this new Nigeria. We are men should not just that they shouldn't be corrupt, but they should be incorruptible. You can't get that in the traditional platform that is existing in Nigeria now. You cannot get it in PDP. You cannot get it in APC. I dare anybody that wants to confront what I'm saying. So I agree with you. The elected class now, even some from Labour Party, have not impressed me. They've not impressed Nigerians. But P. Toby has impressed me because I was inside the political room and I knew how he was carrying his life. And I knew that he meant it when he said, I would rather do the right thing and lose than doing the wrong thing and winning. So I agree with you. But please, if you watch what I'm saying, I keep talking about P. Toby, New Nigeria. 
Because for now, he is the only politician I can tell you that can make these things possible. Look at what is happening in Nigeria today. Can you say this is what we wanted to see? That our debt now is 88 trillion naira. And what are you spending it for? Nothing. Consumption. Buying SUVs. 100% imported for 469 members of the National Assembly. And you are talking about job creation. You know, he said his eight priority areas. You know, he mentioned it in the speech. National defense and security. He has failed on that. Job creation. He has failed on that. Look at it. Macroeconomic stability. He has failed on that. He said he removed dual foreign exchange and wanted to make a single exchange. Are we not having the dual today? They are saying 800 Naira, official rate, and you have 1,200 Naira. He has failed on that. You talk about investment environment optimization. He has failed on that. You talk about this is his own eighth priority area. You talk about poverty reduction. He has failed on that. You talk about social security. He has failed on that. You talk about human capital development. He has failed on that. What else has he not failed on? Wole Shoinka had to go to his office and say, my friend, you have one year to deliver. He gave him seven point agenda. In Lagos State, his own town, Lagos Island, they were crying, we are hungry, we are hungry. So with profound respect, he has failed in the eighth priority area. 77 months of democracy is approaching 20% of your time. Well, but some people, some people would say that seven months, you know, is a little bit too short for you to judge if he has failed or not. Don't you think we have been a bit too hasty in judging him so harshly? You know, there's a proverb in my place that if you want to know how the thing of a little, of a big lady is, if you see the thing of a little lady, you will know. So, you know, if you want to know how the four years will be, you start from seven months. In these seven months, how has he worked hard to cut wastage? I just told you about 40 billion naira is going to go into consumption that will add no productivity to Nigeria. I just told you a man who said he wants to revamp the economy, revitalize the the industrial sector, and yet you're buying 469 imported SUVs when you have products that are assembled in Nigeria that you could have bought to improve the productive capacity of these firms. So what else is he going to do differently? He has borrowed 15.8, about 15.8 billion naira, uh, billion dollars. When is he going to pay all this? He's spending 98% of the revenue servicing debts, and he's borrowing more. What else are you expecting? Let me tell you, people are going to be hungry for the next four years. Forget it. Because Naira will not appreciate. The only secret in appreciating Naira is what? There's no magic. Well, there you have it. Strong currency. Uh, strong currency is predicated on strong economy. True. Strong economy presupposes an industrial productive base and a steady export market. All right, He's Kenneth, let me jump in He's here because we have so, expended our time. We appreciate you coming and having this great discussion with us here on Newsday. Uh, Labor Party Presidential Campaign Council Spokesman you. Kenneth Okonkwo, thank you for joining us. Thank you.